has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God. Let us pray. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your children and empower us all with your Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, beginning with verse 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen and whom my soul delights, upon whom I have put my spirit to bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not lifting up his voice, not making it heard in the street. A bruised reed my servant will not break, nor quench a dimly burning wick, but will faithfully bring forth justice. My chosen one will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king for
The second reading comes from the 10th chapter of Acts, beginning with verse 34. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who is God-fearing and practices righteousness is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that Jesus did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised Jesus on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John wouldn't have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to Jesus and he saw God's spirit depend, descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you may be seated. And do we have any children who'd like to come forward this morning? Come on up. We're going to move around a little bit, so I'm not going to sit, but you can sit to start if you want. You know what this is? Neptune. You are so good. I had to look up which planet it was, but yeah, is it the right direction or do I have it upside down? Okay, you don't know that. That's good. That makes me feel better. Yeah, so that's Neptune. Where is that? Out in space, right? Okay, we're, we got a lot of space things going on here. How about this one? That's a sea star? A starfish? Yeah, I, is, is it? Well, what about that one? That's a star. So did I goof up on that one? That's not in space, is it? It's on the beach. Oh, okay. So which one of these did the wise men follow? This one, right? No. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay, the one that's in space. Okay, yeah. I think you're right. So the wise men, a lot of times we hear the wise men are part of like Christmas Eve, right? But they actually came after Jesus was born. 
So they heard about Jesus being born and then they started to travel. You heard that story. So just a couple of days ago, we remember the epiphany when they follow the star. Why are they following the star? Who are they looking for? Jesus. They're looking for Jesus, right? Yeah. So where I'm gonna, let's let's think look around here. Where here do you look for Jesus? Where do you encounter Jesus? Let's walk around a little bit. What happens over here? And over there at that platform or down here at the mic. You hear the word, right? The the Bible readings every Sunday. And then we do hear preaching from here. So you encounter Jesus through that, right? You hear about Jesus and God's purpose for the world, God's love. How about up here? What happens up here? At the altar? We're following the star around, kind of, you know, looking for Jesus. We have prayers. We encounter Jesus there. Jesus encounters us. And what's under the white cloth there? the bread and the wine for communion? Does Jesus come to us there? Yeah? yeah. How about this one right here? What's this? I know somebody knows that. The baptismal font where God says, you are my child, my beloved, and claims you. So we hear that. That's where we encounter Jesus in that. That was one more spot. Let's go out here. What about out here? In the community, among the people, do you encounter Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm off? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so gathered in the community, God gathers us together, brings us together, and where two or three are gathered, God meets us there in Jesus. All right, let's go back up and pray. We'll pray. God, thank you for sending us Jesus, and thank you for meeting us in our daily lives. In your word, in our meals, in water, and in our communities. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. So when I was growing up, and somebody would say, well, who are you? What's your name? And I'd tell them my name, and they'd look at me like, Okay. And then I'd say, Pearl Headland's granddaughter. And they go, oh yeah, okay, we know who you are now. Or Gerald Headland's granddaughter. Oh yeah, we know, you know. Pearl was a teacher and had every student in, had, had everyone in town as a student. My grandpa drove the propane truck. So my identity was through my grandparents' last name. The power of names. Well, who are we? What is our identity? Our names mean something. This morning we hear Jesus' story of his baptism. John's baptism is a little different. His is a re baptism of repentance. A tradition of washing away sin, cleansing, making the baptized righteous, a cleansing ritual. But we come to these stories today and we say, yeah, but if Jesus was sinless, why did he get baptized? What did he have to be cleansed from? And what authority did Don have? to baptize Jesus. 
Even John took issue with that. Jesus' baptism was different. So we keep asking, why? Well, Jesus says to fulfill all righteousness, as if that clears it up. Some theologians say, well, Jesus needed to identify as human, and so participated in human traditions. And others call it the beginning of Jesus' official ministry. But I think more important than asking, why was Jesus baptized, and why by John? So we think about the fact that in baptism, God breaches the boundaries between heaven and earth. God names Jesus. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And in naming Jesus as God's son, gives Jesus identi identity and defines him in a new way. And ultimately, Jesus is God's beloved chosen son, and all the other labels and names are secondary. So what does this mean for us? How do we relate it to our baptisms? We also receive Jesus' name. We are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Named as God's beloved chosen children. Now, baptism is not something we choose to do in order to be closer to God or to ensure our salvation after death. It's not our get out of hell free card, but it's a new identity, a new life in God. And our God-given identity changes us. I think about all of the ways that we humans try and define ourselves, the identities that we hang on ourselves, what we wear, the brands, what we drive. When all of those things fall apart, our baptismal identity remains. And Luther says about baptism that each day we can remember our baptism. Every time we encounter the simple, ordinary thing that is water, it's a reminder to us who we are and whose we are. A thing that can give us faith, hope, and courage to continue on. In our reading from Matthew this morning, the voice from heaven speaks to the audience rather than directly to Jesus, saying, this, this one is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And other gospels say directly to Jesus, you are my son, my beloved. So speaking directly to the baptized and also to the community gathered around. It's about community where Jesus meets us. This baptism isn't just me and Jesus event. We receive God's promises in a new way in baptism. The community makes promises to love and support the baptized. The baptized or the parents and sponsors of an infant make promises. It's about accountability in the community of faith. In the mystery of baptism, in our beautiful and incredibly confusing Lutheran baptismal theology, the promise of baptism is God's love for you. And it's just as true for those who are not baptized. 
in the messiness of our world, God invites us into community, gathers us so no one is alone. God comes to us, a vulnerable babe in a manger, a man crucified for not playing political and social games. God comes to us, calls us by name, calls you by name. You are my beloved human. And speaks to the community gathered. This is my beloved human. You, community of God, are God's beloved. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn of the day, number 456 in your hymnal. Today, we have the joy of welcoming a couple new members into our congregation, into our community. At this time, I will invite you forward, Tom and Nancy. Wherever you're comfortable. <laughs> Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. Tom and Nancy Robinson have come to our congregation from Zion Lutheran in Redmond, Oregon. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ 
and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Siblings in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. I invite you to turn and face the congregation. Congregation, let us welcome, welcome these siblings in Christ into this community of faith. We, we rejoice, rejoice with you in the life of baptism. baptism. Together, Together we will give thanks and praise to God and, and proclaim the good news to all the world. And I present to you our two newest members of the congregation. Just welcome them. And you can go. Yep. I invite you to stand as you are able for the prayers of intercession. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things you are declaring and doing. Strengthen clergy, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith, and equip all your people for your reconciling and redeeming work in the world. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect oceans, rivers, and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands and to communities without access to safe water, empowering us to do this work in your name. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Righteous God, you never weary of establishing justice. Increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations, neighbors, and loved ones. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Sustain healthcare workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving, experiencing illness, or who are injured, including Heidi, Jeff, Leslin, Judy, Dick, Julie, Tony, and all those we hold dear. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Blessing God, in Christ you gather a beloved community. Kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people. We give you thanks for our new members, who you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have welcomed into this community of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and prayer, and in service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Promising God, your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ, trusting that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, 
trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share signs with peace of one another this morning. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated. and All are welcome to partake in this meal. All are welcome at this table. Those of you joining us online are welcome to use whatever bread, wine, or grape juice you have on hand. Those here, you'll be ushered forward. I think we're starting on the tree side this morning. So come forward, receive your bread that is gluten-free and vegan, and your wine or your grape juice. The wine is red, the grape juice is white, and there are baskets on either side for you to put your glasses in when you are done. Those of you who wish to remain in your seats or not come forward, you picked up a cup on your way in. And those of you joining us online this time, I invite you to open your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take your wine or your grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We continue with the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gifts of his hope, body, and blood, strengthen, keep us, and unite us now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God who surrounds us, the God who walks with us, the God who blows through us and unites us and baptizes us in life-giving water, go out with us, giving us light and life, courage and peace. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, hymn number 310.
Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.